with Beth PV, and you're gonna learn some. Wait, no, that line's already taken. Uh, maybe you need glasses to say that. I'm Swoop FPV, and you're gonna learn something today. Anyway, today I'm gonna be doing a special video that I wasn't planning on doing, but I decided to go with it anyway. I'm going to be talking about my custom aircraft, the Battle Axe Racer. And you've seen this one in a previous video the winter flying tutorial and flight test. This is what I was flying. And I've only been able to fly this one time, and that was in that video with the new flight controller. But I will talk about three different parts of it. I'll talk about the frame, I'll talk about the FPV system, and I'll talk about the central stack and what I have for the flight controller, power distribution board, ESC, all that. So I'll just cover all the different parts in sections and give my thoughts on how I feel it flies and all in all see if I want to recommend building an aircraft like this or if I think it is just complete junk and I don't even know why I wasted my $200 on it. So let's get started. So talking about everything on the outside, what I'm using is the iFlight Battle Axe 5 inch frame and this I got off of Amazon. It was about forty to fifty dollars. That price may vary. But what I really like about this is the fact that it's five inches, and I haven't had a five-inch quad before. I've had a three and a half inch, uh, roughly, if that's what two hundred twenty millimeters is. And that one I liked. It didn't have the power to it because it was smaller, but it was very maneuverable and had some great acro. So, uh, some of the things that they that they totally knocked out of the park on this is the length allows you to fit a lot of stuff on the inside pretty easily. And then the arms, they allow five inch uh, props. What I'm using are five inch tri-blade doll props. This allows you to have plenty of clearance, and you could probably go higher than 5 inch, maybe 5.5 five inch. And then I like how it has what I call this roll cage in the front for your FPV camera. I believe they call it a camera cage, so when you hit the ground, you kind of hit, and you just kind of roll off of it, so just straight on impact. Uh, so that just goes around the camera like that. I have battery Velcro, they have a nice spot for that. I have a battery pad to help prevent the battery from flying out in the crash. Um, I have some R-Vector 2300 kilovolt motors. Uh, these supply the power that the quadcopter needs to get off the ground because the frame, it's a little bigger so it's a little heavier but not too heavy. On the bottom, it's all just a flat plate. There is some support for the arms in the middle right there. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but I have foam landing gear. Not my favorite, not ideal, but it's what I had, and I don't want to spend a whole bunch of money on this. So, one thing to note is these arms where the motors attach just look totally awesome with like this medieval battle axe look to them. So, yeah, uh, BL Heli 32 ESCs. Um, yeah, they run 2-4S to four S batteries, so those are nice to have. I believe they have programmable LEDs. I have not explored that yet. So, yeah, I think that's everything that needs to be talked about for the frame. I highly recommend this. If you really want to have a cool-looking frame, I would say the iFlight Battle Axe frame is a great way to go. Keep in mind, it's 5 inches. So it's a 5 inch quadcopter, so keep that in mind when you're looking at it. If you don't want one that big, look for something else. If you're fine with that, look at this one first. This one, for the price it's at and the quality of the build, honestly you can't beat it. This, this thing's pretty good. So that's the frame. Go ahead, pop off the top plate, and we'll see what's on the inside. 
So what I wanted to do before I cracked the top off is I wanted to at least show you how you get the top plate off because it's a little tricky. You have a part right here that locks in the camera cage. So you kind of have to lift and then kind of wiggle it out of there. Just like that. And then it comes loose. You can pop it off and I gotta move this out of the way. My power cables have had issues so it's kind of hard to fit them somewhere when popping the top off, top off but yeah it's close enough so on the inside what I have is I have the Flysky FSI A6B I believe it's called that's my receiver because I use a Flysky I6S uh, remote so that's what is right here um, it has a simple PPM cable that just solders onto flight controller and you just I just plug that into the iBus because of how I need to set it up so let's just move that out of the way so then I have the CL Racing F4S flight controller this is a all-in-one so it has a flight controller the power distribution board um, it doesn't have the ESCs, but it does have OSD, supports PPM, iBus, uh, you can put programmable LEDs on it, and it plugs into a computer and runs Betaflight, so you can do all your programming on Betaflight. So yeah, a whole bunch of different things. It has a camera control pad, which is different normally if you want to do camera control, which is going into your camera and setting all the color balances and all sorts of stuff. Uh, normally you have to plug the OSD stuff into a uh, like LED strip or whatever on the flight control you have to put a resistor you have all sorts of stuff but this has a camera control pad which allows for you to just solder into that and you don't need a resistor the timers are already there yeah just makes it a whole lot easier so uh, if you look at it um, Basically, your ESCs are here, they plug in there, you have uh, the ground, you have the signal, you have the uh, power over here, it's the same, I believe that's focused, yeah, you just have your ESCs right there, right here is where your receiver solders in, just very simple, right here is where your camera goes, so the camera control pad is right here, OSD is this yellow one, ground and then the power and your video transmitter just solders right here very easy everything on this transmitter or flight controller rather everything on this is very easy to solder everything is labeled the wiring diagram that you can look up for the user's manual is very easy to follow the only sketchy part is the camera control it's kind of hard to figure that out but there's some online sources that will help you out uh, so on the bottom you're just uh, soldering in the power cable I'm not gonna access that because it's only the power cable so that is the flight controller um, I really like the CL Racing 4S it's not super expensive it's about fifty dollars on amazon and the fact that it's a pdb and osd and all that stuff it it makes it very very valuable to have uh, one thing you have to make sure is the cables from your esc to the flight controller you have to make sure you measure them well i made a mistake where i had to change my flight controller and on the other one they led to here 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 and here. Well, these, the ground has to reach all the way over to here, and on this one, the power all the way over to there. So they were a little short. I had to do some weird soldering. It probably isn't the best, but yeah, that's the flight controller side of it. So now we're going to talk about the FPV portion of this battle axe. So the last part of this video, I'm going to be talking about the FPV portion. 
So, hidden in this little tuck area under the antennas for the receiver, uh, that is where my FPV transmitter is. Um, I don't recall exactly which one it is. It might be a Wolf Whoop something. But, uh, very simple uh, transmitter. You can select how many milliwatts you want to push out. So, 25, 200, and uh, I remember what the other setting is. But, the nice thing is where the wires plug in on the back. Something I haven't seen before this one has is that locks in. So you push it, it'll snap, and then you can't just pull it out easily. So issues I've had with other transmitters in the past is that rips out and you you can't use that anymore. So that's nice to have on there. One other thing I like is the uh, frame. I forgot to mention this comes with this. You can probably see that like red lock thing. So what you do is you put that over the transmitter and then you can screw your antenna in and this just holds it all in place keeps it from snapping easily like you know I've had those issues in the past I'm sure other people have too and that just slides over the standoffs here and you can put your uh, receiver antennas through just like that so it's very nice to have and I would recommend getting that uh, my camera it is a CADEX camera uh, just in the front. So an issue I had with this is I didn't have the width of the cage as I was ordering everything. So I just got a camera assuming it would fit in. However, as you can see, the camera is not wide enough to do the standard detachment of fitting right in and then putting screws here and here. I had to take the mount I had, and on this frame, there's a grill as you can see, and I have two screws here. That is attaching the mount to the camera so it's just hanging like that so I don't know if you can see it but that's how I attached it and yeah like I said I have camera control set up which is nice so I believe that is everything for the frame just to recap I have whoops I have my receiver sitting in here and you just pop everything back on I'll show you one more time how you get the top plate on so you just kind of take it slide it in I think it's harder to put it back than it is to put it on yeah I might have something blocking it yeah it looks like my receiver is in the way so I'll work on that, get it back on, and yeah, that's the FPV system. forgot to mention I use a Cloverleaf antenna. I don't remember which one it is. I've had this for a while. The cap is broken off, so yeah. But that's the FPV system, so that covers all the different parts. So, in this video... I covered my custom aircraft, the Battleaxe 5 inch aircraft, and I showed you all the different parts, the frame, the outside components, the FPV, and the flight controller portion. So my final thoughts on it, I would say a great aircraft to have. Um, I'm, I'm not professional on all the best parts to have, but I think I picked some pretty, pretty decent things. So I did say I've only done one flight. Like I said, my winter flying tutorial and test flight video, I had one flight controller before it broke. So I've technically done two flights, but only one flight on my newest flight controller, uh, CEO flying F4S flight controller. Um, so my very, very first flight, I'm used to flying the Ishin Wizard X220, and I fly in my front yard, backyard, so not very big, has lots of trees, but a good place to test fly. I flew this at my usual 30 degree camera tilt, so about like that. It was so fast, so much faster than my X220, that I was out of control. I, it was the only time in my flying 
ignoring my very first few flights. It was my first time in a long time where I felt like I was out of control and I, <laughs> this doesn't happen often, I freaked out. I was like, what is wrong with this thing? It's too fast. So now I fly it at like a 15 degree camera tilt in my front and backyard and if I'm in an open field I fly it at the 30 degree tilt but it's good for speed, it's good for acro mode, uh, I'm still experimenting with it, the flights I have, well, the flight I had was a little sloppy, I will admit to that, I was trying to figure out my PID settings and just learning the aircraft, so, I think that concludes this video, uh, there's not much more I can say about this, the way it flies speaks for itself. Uh, I'll put a link to all the different parts in the description in case you want to go and buy everything for this aircraft or if you want to get the frame and just kind of get different parts, you know, do whatever. I don't care what you do, I just hope people watch this video because <laughs> I really want lots of views. So after watching this, tell your friends about this channel, tell family about this channel, keep watching this channel. Uh, I wish I could add flight footage after this video, but I don't have any more flight footage from this aircraft, and I don't want to steal it from my wizard, just because I don't have a lot of wizard videos left anymore. However, in the future, I will be making a video comparing cameras, and that one will be fun. So stay tuned for that one. I, I can't wait to do that video, but it's snowing outside, and I have not waterproofed this drone, nor do I want to try because waterproofing still doesn't work the best. So, stay tuned to the channel, like this video, subscribe, comment if you liked this type of video where I did some vlogging type of stuff, but you know, just let me know what you think, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.